If you don't pay that much attention to Japanese baseball, the name that probably comes to mind when someone mentions an elite young starting pitcher is Roki Sasaki. And that's fair, the guy is 21 years old, throws 102 miles per hour, and put up an ERA of 1.48 before getting injured this year. He's getting all the buzz right now, but if he didn't exist, we'd all instead be talking about Yoshinobu Yamamoto as the next Japanese ace coming to Major League Baseball. And I think regardless of Sasaki's historic dominance, Yamamoto is a guy who everyone should be paying attention to and talking about right now. Yamamoto, who is just 24 years old, has been NPB's best pitcher for a few years now. He's won not only back-to-back -back Sawamura awards, which is Japan's Cy Young equivalent, but also back-to-back -back MVPs in the Pacific League and is well on track for number 3, as long as his team the Oryx Buffaloes makes a deep playoff run, because that's how MVP voting kind of works in NPB. If he does take it home this year, he'd be the third player ever to win three straight in the Pacific League, and the first since Ichiro Suzuki in the mid-90s. He'd also be the ninth player to win three MVPs in the league's 73-year history, which is absolutely incredible, considering he still might be a few seasons away from his prime. It's probable that if Yamamoto stayed in Japan his whole career, he'd go down as one of the greatest to ever do it, but this coming offseason, he'll be available instead to all 30 MLB teams, and he'll surely be one of the game's most coveted free agents. Yamamoto's career with the Oryx Buffaloes began in 2016 when they drafted him in the fourth round. In 2017, 20 made his debut as a middle reliever at age 18. In 2018, he became the team's setup man and was one of the league's better relievers. Things didn't really take off though till 2019 when the Buffalo's new manager made Yamamoto a starting pitcher and he exploded for a 1.95 ERA in 20 games. 2020 was a similarly great season that established him as one of the league's best starting pitchers. At age 22 in 2021, he became the league's undisputed best starting pitcher, going 18-5 with a 1.39 ERA, 0.85 whip, 206 strikeouts. In 2022, he threw a no-hitter, put up a 1.68 ERA, and repeated as the Pacific League MVP and of course the Sawamura Award winner. And then this year, he's been the exact same pitcher. The ERA is a bit higher at 1.78, but all his peripherals indicate nothing has changed since that insane 2021 season. Enough of his history for now though, let's talk about Yamamoto's skill set and the reasons why he's been so elite. His main strength has always been incredible command for all of his pitches. He's walked just 2 guys per 9 throughout his career, and just 1.2 per 9 this year, that will be the second lowest in Major League Baseball behind George Kirby. Unlike a lot of the guys you'll see who are elite at limiting walks, Yamamoto has also been elite at limiting home runs. His 0.2 homers per 9 this year is right in line with his career averages, and would be the lowest in Major League Baseball, with the guys closely trailing him, like Marcus Stroman and Sonny Gray, walking way more hitters than Yamamoto does. Yamamoto also gets a lot of strikeouts, at least over in Japan, he's averaged around 9.5 Ks per 9 the past few seasons, and while that's not elite and is bound to go down when he comes to the US, he definitely has top of the rotation stuff to go along with his command. His fastball sits in the mid 90s, but he's fully capable of dialing it up to a 98-99 when needed. He's also good at keeping that velocity up in the later innings, as even into the 7th and 8th when he's often still pitching, he still hits mid 90s consistently, and it's not just a straight fastball either, as according to his Fangraph scouting report, he can modify its shape to give it some sinking, cutting, or riding action. He also separately throws a cutter, and his low 90s splitter is right up there with the ghost fork of Kodai Senga, and is considered his best pitch. Additionally, he throws a very beautiful slow rainbow curveball that puts some batters away as well. With his combo of stuff and command, teams seem to be looking at him as a good number 2 starter right now in any MLB rotation, and of course being just 24-25 by the time next season starts, there is still time to add velocity or tweak his pitch mix, or make any changes a team sees fit to help him be more successful transitioning to baseball in the US. Now there's not really anything to be concerned about with Yamamoto being a pretty durable, consistent MVP candidate as a starter in Japan, but there is the fact that you never know how a player's performance is going to translate moving leagues. Of course, there's many recent examples of Japanese players, especially pitchers, coming to the majors and being successful. Kodai Senga, of course, who signed with the Mets last offseason, has a 3 one ERA, but on the flip side, Shintaro Fujinami has an ERA over 8. These guys are both pretty different pitchers than Yamamoto, they excel in getting strikeouts, and when they struggle, it's because of spotty commands. But if we look further in the past, there are guys who pitch more like Yamamoto who've made the jump to Major League Baseball. I think the easiest comparison is Masahiro Tanaka. Now a lot has changed in the baseball landscape since 2014 when he came over, but in 
He beat Tanaka averaged around 8 Ks per 9, around 2 walks per 9, and hardly gave up any home runs, while also coming to the US at age 25, just like Yamamoto. He also put up an ERA well below 2 the season before he came over, just as Yamamoto will be, barring any late collapse through the rest of the season. Tanaka's first three years in the MLB went really well with the Yankees, he put up a 3.12 ERA and a 1.05 whip. He did struggle with giving up home runs, they are far more prevalent in the US than they are in Japan, so that is something that may happen to Yamamoto as well. With a pretty weak free agent class outside of Otani, Yamamoto should be one of the most coveted guys on the market, and he'll be paid accordingly. According to MLB trade rumors, Yamamoto is likely to become the highest paid Japanese player in Major League history outside of Shohei, with a contract that could exceed $200 million if he can remain healthy and productive through the rest of this season. In terms of price, it's important to note that the team who signs Yamamoto would be required to pay the Oryx Buffaloes a fee equal to 20% of the contract's first $25 million plus 17.5% of the contract's next $25 million, plus 15% of the money committed thereafter. That's a pretty hefty amount to pay that'll be added to a already large contract for Yamamoto, but still, a 25-year-old with ace upside should attract the interest of lots of teams. The Mets and the Red Sox have reportedly been scouting Yamamoto pretty recently, but I'd expect almost every big market team to be in on him, as well as any mid-market teams in need of a starter with some money to spend. You guys let me know in the comments who you think Yamamoto is going to go to, how well you think he'll perform in Major League Baseball. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed.